Hey, hey, what's up everybody? We back for video number 17. This is going to be a cool one. This one is about the U.S. government's involvement in paranormal research. So this is a pretty interesting topic. I mean, there's a lot I could say. I mean, most people would dismiss this whole topic out of hand right away. But I will say all you got to do is go on the CIA website and look into uh, Project Stargate Project. You can look it up. Um, there's a document collection. I think the general collection is called CREST, C-R-E-S-T. I'm not sure what exactly that stands for. But basically, uh, <clears throat> it's a broad term that encompasses various different projects of the U.S. government's investigation of paranormal phenomena, mostly relating to espionage. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and say about that. I mean... I like to take things from a historical perspective. So I'll go ahead and talk about... So we talked about James Bond in one of the early videos. And uh, Ian Fleming was highly connected to Crowley and various other occultists. And I mean, there's tons of books out there about the use of occultism and occultists in World War II. Um, but I'm going to go back to the 1500s and this motherfucker John D. Right? So this the reason why James Bond is called 007 is because that's what John D was called. Who the fuck is John D? If you don't understand about John D, you have no idea if anything about the modern world cuz this motherfucker basically created that shit. He created the English alphabet that we now have. He was highly involved in the the printing of the King James Bible. So the most widely dispersed and considered authoritative translation was done by this guy and in fact my contention which is pretty easily provable is that he actually created the english alphabet as we know it with 26 letters for use in the bible translation that was functioning as a mathematical cipher now this is my personal theory that i have that i worked out myself i don't i've never heard anyone else mention this but basically okay so first of all the English alphabet is most largely based on the Canaanite and Hebrew alphabet, <clears throat> first of all, which is well known. I mean, if you go back and look at the etymology of all these different alphabets, like Canaanite, it are always close to the beginning. Because if you look at, they're called abjads, you know, like alphabet comes from alpha, be alpha beta in Greek, but it really comes from aleph bet which is the first two letters of the Hebrew alphabet. But they also call them abjads because most of them go A, B, G, D. So there's, that's one thing D changed, for instance. But basically, my point is to say there's a reason why there's 26 letters in the alphabet, and it has to do with gematria. Okay, first of all, if you take the single and final forms of the Hebrew alphabet, that gives you 27. Guess what the missing letter is from English? Shh. Stands for silence, right? think about that shit so that's the one that's different between those two alphabets it, uh, the Hebrew has sh. okay but if you take 26 okay it's based on it's a cipher that's based on the cube okay for one thing that's one decryption okay so first of all I gotta explain D was a mathematician and astrologer for the queen and he selected her coronation date and he was probably I mean Da Vinci was no slouch but D was probably the most intelligent person that's ever lived. <laughs> you know, he had a library of thousands of books in the 1500s that was not back when books were mostly handmade and stuff. You know, that was not something common. I think he had a larger library than the whatever the Royal Library was at that time or the Oxford. Li you know, this is one dude, but he traveled all over Europe. He, sp he was a polyglot. He spoke probably six or seven European languages and a bunch of ancient languages and he was really into math and numbers and number theory <clears throat> so anyway the point is he was an occultist that was what he's mostly known for I mean he translated uh, Euclid's elements of a uh, geometrical textbook you know of ancient Greece into English and he published a lot of pretty sick books but um he was an occultist, and he believed in the hermetic view of the world, which was that everything operates by vibration and correspondence and um, various numerical and mathematic principles. 
So his occultism is pretty much the basis for a lot of Freemasonry. And Enochian magic is named after his workings with the angels. So that's a whole story I can get into. D was a crystal scryer. You can go to the British Museum and see his crystal ball and his obsidian mirror that supposedly came from some super rare Mexican obsidian or it's from yeah way far away from England, you know what I mean? He 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 took the shit extremely serious and he <clears throat> was widely respected. Uh, he was a cartographer. That was one of his main contributions. He also coined the phrase British Empire. And so without the cartography that he did, the British Empire probably would never have existed as it has. So that's an interesting fact. He also was instrumental in various events in the United, the settling of the United States. And his probably his protege or whatever, his most closest disciple, if you will, was Francis Bacon, who is credited with pretty much inventing what we call the modern scientific method. And he and himself was extraordinarily prolific. Most people, or a lot of people, think that he was instrumental in writing all the works of Shakespeare as well, Francis Bacon. I mean, I could choke a horse with all that documentation, but it's been done. No one, I don't think there's much interest in that. And there's plenty of people out there doing a really good job of explaining all about the, the Baconian thesis. I personally have a modified Baconian thesis, which is that there were other people involved, you know, like uh, all these different earls and whatnot um, at Gray's Inn. So Gray's Inn at the time was like the law school for England. So my point is to say, okay, for the main, for the main highest lawyers in England all went to Gray's Inn and they basically collaborated and wrote the works of Shakespeare and uh, the poetry and stuff. But it's that, those literary works are all part of the cipher, right? So those works are composed and coded with most of the same elements of cryptography that you would see in the King James Bible, for example. <clears throat> and um, English is a coded language that was created by a mathematician. And it's based on the properties of the cube. Oh, I forgot that part. Okay, so the reason why it's based on the cube is if you take the eight vertices of a cube, and you add that to the six sides, the 12 edges, you get 26. So the, the, the corners of a cube, the sides of a cube, and the faces of a cube add to 26, basically. So, and then there's another reason. As I said, it's based on largely on Canaanite and Hebrew. And in, in that language, Akkad uh, means unity, and Yahweh means, you know, the creation force. And so the creation force is a double unity because Akkad is 13, so Yahweh is 26. So that's why the English alphabet has 26. Okay, so my point is to saying all that is, that, okay, so this dude was also a spy and a cryptographer. Like he created all these codes so people could secretly communicate. And he himself was a spy for, what was it, Queen Elizabeth the I? I think that's right. And he might be her son. I'm pretty pretty sure he was actually her secret son but anyway he would sign all his his communications 007 and that's how the name 007 came around so you know he was a spy he was a cryptographer he was a magician okay and he was the inspiration for James Bond <laughs> so this is the type of shit I'm trying to get into but what we see here is that someone who created even the precursor to the United States the British Empire basically was very instrumental probably the most instrumental person even though he wasn't queen or king you know what i mean because his ideas you can't imagine the scope of this dude's ideas like he was into so many things it's like a modern person can't even understand and he's a pretty good writer i've read a lot of his original works and studied his geometry and stuff and cryptography but anyway the point is he believed in psychic phenomena, and he was a scryer, so he would try to look in a crystal ball and see faraway shit. And apparently he was pretty good at it, because look at what he was able to accomplish. You know what I mean? And this is a person who was also rational and logical and scientific beyond most people's comprehension. Optic, his contribution to the field of optics is pretty fucking impressive, I would say. And I would recommend looking into that if you have any bent towards physics or mathematics. Um, John Dee's work on optics is pretty amazing. Anyway, um, the point is to say 
that occultism is so central to governments and what they do that it goes back even before the United States. And even ever, all the precursors to the United States were created by occultists. I mean, everyone knows all about the Freemasons and the Rosicrucians and all these... Dude, the U.S. was settled and created by a whole fucking handful of cults, dude. The Jesuits. I haven't even gone over that one yet. I don't really want to get into that one because that's a huge... That's like an eight-hour video by itself. But anyways, the point is... The Jesuits were also very interested in occultism and paranormal shit like that for spying. And they're, you know, Jesuits are like, I can't even say what they are of spy craft. They're probably, I mean, progenitors, <laughs> maybe a little excessive, but it's pretty much pretty close. But anyway, okay, so the government knows about all kinds of psychic phenomena for number one. And they investigated and spent, I don't know, how many million dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars probably, investigating psychic phenomena. And so, now we've gone over John D. I'm just going to skip over a lot of the middle stuff, and we're going to go straight to Project Stargate. And that involves various psychics um, trying to work on something called remote viewing. And basically, I think, if I recall correctly, that this whole thing was basically initiated because the Russian psychic spies were so badass that they were fucking running loops around everything. And the remote viewing was so effective that it was way more reliable. And I mean, there's like zero expenditure, like versus sending a human like person on the ground to go out and spy on some shit who might get killed, captured, etc., and backfire and cause you all kinds of problems. You just get a psychic to remote view it. This is what they call it. So you put your mind into a certain state and they have this whole, and they could teach anybody, like all kinds of people learn. Like they first started out only doing people that were already considered psychic and demonstrated psychic abilities. But then they just started doing it with random ass whoever. And it seemed to work <laughs> pretty well actually. So everyone has a pretty innate ability to do what's called remote viewing, which is basically you just pick a target. Like, you don't even have to know what the target is. Sometimes they would just give people coordinate numbers on a paper that that person wouldn't even necessarily know on a map where this place would be. <clears throat> but they would go through this process and they would record whatever came into their mind. And, you know, sometimes it was extremely detailed. Like, I heard the story of a woman they used... That was reading, no, oh, so they, they wanted her, her target was a satellite in orbit, you know, miles and miles above the earth, right? <laughs> and super high tech and stuff like that, computers and all kinds of observational equipment and whatnot. <clears throat> but this lady was basically to, able to read serial numbers off the various parts of the satellite, as well as giving um, the data that the satellite was observing at that moment where she was doing it, you know? So this is the kind of thing, it was documented and like studied under, you know, scientific clinical type conditions by the U.S. government. And I mean, there's all kinds of famous people that were involved. Yuri Geller was a famous psychic back from the 70s and 80s. He was involved. Uh, Andrea Puharic and uh, I, I hear that the Astor family, which is one of the supposedly 13 Illuminati bloodlines of the United States, that they were involved in uh, <laughs> Gene Roddenberry. People like that to do that. Okay, so the group they had with the Astors doing the psychic like seances and psychic research was called the Nine. Or they were trying to contact the Nine. That's what it was. And they believed that the Nine were somehow these like disembodied higher intelligences or something like that. And so that's why Gene Roddenberry created Deep Space Nine. And I guess there's all these cultural phenomena that originated out out of some super billionaires and the U.S. government trying to research psychic phenomena, right? So, and, I mean, there's been all kinds of modern research done um, that statistically verifies all these different phenomena. But the point, I guess, I would like to say is basically that all these things are real. Big, big, rich, practical people that want to make money and a profit or to be super spies and shit. They're interested enough to invest a lot of money and time into all these things. So it doesn't seem like these cold calculating like money wizards are going to like try to waste money on something frivolous. You know what I mean? Unless it works. So 
this is just something I would point to, and I would I would recommend anyone to go look into it if if this is a topic that interests you. But this is just kind of opening the door, I feel, because this is something that people can easily go verify right away with any kind of search engine, you know, Project Stargate CIA documents. Like it's on the CIA.gov website. I was looking through it for quite some time, and I was reading all about it. And they were giving scientific theories of how um, these these phenomena work, remote viewing and other types of psycho, um, what would you call it? A clairvoyance, basically, you know, different types of clairvoyance. And, um, anyway, yeah, it's all out there to read. And it's been an ongoing thing, like some private, <coughs> private non-governmental groups have done it as well. Um, but... The point is to say that one of the major applications of all this is spycraft and espionage. So, if the government can do it and use it, and they're relying oftentimes on just random ass people, like normal average people to do it, how come this isn't taught to every school child of how to use their mental faculties? You know what I mean? But getting back to the scientific aspect of it, I mean, there's many so-called uh, quantum non-locality phenomenon where information is transmitted faster than light between two remotely located positions, right? So this has been many times documented. I mean, entangle photon entanglement and stuff like that. You know, it's well known. It's not a controversial thing. It's extremely well known, even by the dummies of modern science, even by the academic tarred farmers <laughs> of modern science know that this is real. So why don't people know that, you know? Or why don't people recognize its implications for human life and how to improve our lives and make a freer world where people can use the utmost of their capacities? I mean, the simple answer to that was because is that basically government only exists by dumbing down and downgrading us all because we don't need governments. Humans have self-regulated and lived their own lives and been autonomous for who knows? They don't even know how long. You know, it's it's very long. <laughs> you know what I mean? Government is like a virus on the planet. of Because it can only exist when the individuals are downgraded and had their self-sufficiency and self-reliance surgically removed by... I mean, I could list off 15 or 20 different ways, but let's start off with fluoridation of the water supply and public education. I would say... And the downgrading of the food supply as well. So those three things alone will will basically create like a subhuman race of tards. I mean, if you really want to fuck them up, you give them a microwave radiation device, which you call cell phones. And that will definitely fucking scramble their brainwaves to where they can't use proper English anymore. And they just use emojis instead of words and letters. You know, this is something that's currently going on. So maybe if you don't want to be a slave, like, stop doing that stuff. <laughs> be intelligent. Learn. Use words. Read books. Study ancient wisdom from thousands of years before these fucked up satanic cults <laughs> started running shit. You know, like in, in your life, you know, or the life of, of, you know, many people were not always subject to this tyrannical shit that we have now. You know, it's a, it's an anomaly. It's not the norm. It's not the new normal. It's the old abnormal. <laughs> so, they know that humans are psychic. Like, these oppressors in government, ty tyranny, fucking technocrats, all know that human beings have innate psychic capacity and the capacity for great intelligence and independent thought and self-sufficiency. And so, <laughs> they study it all so that they can fuck you up. <laughs> and keep you in check so that they have a slave that they can continue to profit on you know so why not just become wise and stop being an asshole and a dumbass and a consumer narcissist and learn how to be a fucking wild ass beast it's more fun right <laughs>